Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Warfighter Shadow War, the modern night combat card game. This is a game designed by Dan Verson and published by DVG. This is the latest iteration in the long-running Warfighter series, and for fans of the series, you're going to be excited to have this one because now you're dealing with special operators operating at night. Noise is definitely something you're going to want to concern yourself with. As the title says, it is a shadow war. You want to get in there and be like ghosts. Not seen, not heard, but the objective is taken. You're operating in small teams, so you don't want to bring down a large force on top of you, and I think that is going to add a really interesting aspect to the game. For those who've never played the Warfighter series, this is a tactical card combat game. And yeah, it may sound a little weird to play a tactical game using cards, but it works incredibly well. Now, it is not a hardcore simulation of tactical combat, but it is a very fun and exciting game to play. It is more along the Hollywood action type of stuff you'd expect to see in a movie or TV show, but a lot of fun. There is a good deal of tactical thought involved in the game, but... Don't be intimidated by hearing it's a tactical game. Oh, it's going to be too much. It's going to be over him, over my head. Nope, absolutely not. Very easy to get into and very fun to play. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. Warfighter Modern Shadow War takes the Warfighter card game series to the world of night combat operations. Warfighter Modern Shadow War is a cooperative game that places you and up to five of your friends in the world's most deadly night combat missions where noise is as much your enemy as the hostile forces. You'll begin each mission by selecting your soldiers and equipping them with weapons, equipment, and skills. During the missions, you'll engage enemy soldiers as you advance through locations on your way to your objective. Warfighter Modern Shadow War can be played with one to six players. Each player takes on the role of a soldier selected for a special mission. The game system controls the enemy soldiers, and Warfighter does not require any special rules for solitaire play. And it says at the bottom, look for the Warfighter Modern Shadow War expansion packs to expand your missions. Game components, you get 224 cards, three sheets of counters, five dice, a 17 by 33 inch mounted display, and a rule book. It is for ages 14 and up, one to six players, 30 to 90 minutes, and it is moderate complexity. And yeah, 30 to 90 minutes is pretty accurate because sometimes I've been in missions that have gone south and I've been done in 15 or 20 minutes, and others have gone for uh, about 90 minutes or so. Here's an example of the cards and the counters that will come with the game. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. We have our rule book, scenario book number two, keywords handout, three counter sheets, our display, and dice and multiple decks of cards. So let's set everything up and take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the display that comes with Shadow War. It is a mounted board and it has a gloss finish as you can tell by the slight glare. This is where you're going to be placing your different decks and the location cards so you can keep track of where you are in each scenario. Hostile reaction forces, locations, and action decks go over here. Up here is your turn track and then you have two attack roll tables for unaware and normal. Your insertion point is here and then the location cards when you're on mission go here until you reach your objective and then hit the exfil point. Your soldier turn and hostile turn actions are listed out there on the top right of the board for you. Soldier attacks and hostile attacks, those steps are there as well. So that way you can easily reference it during play, not having to remember every single thing from the rule book. And with noise being a big factor in this game, this is the table that tells you the soldier actions and the amount of noise that's generated. You have seven steps till you get to the alarm sounded, and that's what you're trying to avoid. And obviously things like normal attack die, that's going to raise it up 10 points. So you're not going to want to be doing it. As you notice, there's a different one there. It says each subsonic or black ammo attack die is only five. So obviously you want to make sure you're using subsonic ammo, silenced weapons. That's going to be whisper quiet it's not going to be really easily heard. So that's what you're going to be doing when you're playing in a shadow war. Then you have the mobilization status or on duty or on alert. And then on the right hand side is the going for alarm track as well. So that way you can tell where you are sound wise. Just like when you're playing any of the stealth type of games on the computer, it gives you that little stealth meter that tells you where you're at. That is going to act in the same way. Now we'll take a look at some of the cards that come with the game. As is in true DVG fashion, there are a ton of cards to go through. We're not going to go through them all, but I'm going to give you an example of some of them. Here are some regular Warfighter cards that you can add into your Warfighter game. P Pistol and SMG, Reacquire, Marksman, and Picking. This one I get a kick out of. It says Picking. You can purchase a skill for any soldier with the Pick ability, and 
You don't need to pick when you have the true master key, which is the shotgun with breaching charges. That's going to win every time. And we'll take a look at some of the enemy cards. We have the sentry, civilian, and guard. As you notice, there is an attack roll for the sentry and the guard. But for the civilian, you're obviously trying to evade, and you get 2 XP if you evade. And you may not declare an attack against the civilian unless the civilian is going for an alarm or is in the objective. Obviously, that's the one thing you want to do is avoid any needless casualties. But if the civilian is going to compromise you on mission, they've made themselves a viable target. In the insertion cards, we have multiple ways of getting into the objective. We have a parachute hey ho jump, high altitude, high opening, where you coast in, and then you've got helo insertion, vehicle through the Humvee, and then amphibious insertion off a rib. And here are some of the location cards in the game. These are all North Korea. That's what comes with the base game. You have the forced labor farm, abandoned warehouse, and slum cards. Then take a look at a few of the objective cards. We have Tapa Hacking Center, China Oil Pipelines, and VIP Defector. There are also embedded objective cards. Here is a VIP embedded VIP assassination, a bridge demolition, and a pipeline demo. Then some of the mission cards, nice and easy. Going small, and this one's real interesting. It's only one soldier going in, so you're going to be going in really, really small, and then no sweat. And some of the skill cards, we have Silent Movement, Patience, and Noise Discipline, which increases the mission's activity by one. And here are some of the equipment cards. This is the comms tracer. You have a suppressor one. There are actually three different types of suppressors in the game, one, two, and three. And then your nods for running around in the dark so you don't fall into a hole. And we'll take a look at a few of the weapons cards that come with the game. Obviously going to be pretty much all suppressed. We have M4 Carbine, M9 Pistol, Hush Puppy, and then you've got the K-Bar when you want to be quiet. And then you go to the opposite extreme and you can go loud with the M72 Law. And we'll take a look at a few of the action cards. This is what drives the action in the game. When you play this move card, you'll add three to noise and roll for noise for this soldier. Different angle. Player, after you draw an unaware target counter, draw again and choose which one to use. It's kind of giving you the idea of you're in one location. You're kind of changing your angle, obviously, to get a better vantage point. So you can choose which one it's going to be to make it a little bit better, kind of mitigate the risk. Just the wind, change the hostile status from pauses to unaware. And then hold, play at the start of the soldier turn. If you do not increase noise during the soldier turn, subtract four from noise at the end of the soldier's turn. This is really critical because this is not going to be a game where you're constantly always moving. You're going to sometimes want to take that hold and let things quiet down, let everybody get back to normal, let all the guards, you know, light up and chill out, and then you can continue on mission. And we have our three counter sheets that come with the game. A lot of admin counters here because there's a lot of things to track throughout the game, but everything's pretty self-explanatory and easy to read. These look like they're pretty thick counters, what we expect from DBG, and they do punch nice and clean. So uh, as an example of one right there, that's how thick it is and nicely rounded, no shot counter. And we'll take a look inside the rule book that comes with the game. It is an 81 page rule book. And before you kind of go, oh, 81 pages, how the heck can it be 81 pages? This is the universal rule book. This is the rule book for all Warfighter games. And then inside also comes with the Shadow War game rules and campaigns and metal cards, vehicles, all that stuff that is specific to this game. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're looking through this rule book, especially for newcomers to the series, it's a lot of big text, a lot of illustrations. That's why it's 81 pages. So don't be intimidated by page count alone. That's not really a, a big issue, especially when you see how large the text is and the images that support it for illustrated examples, as well as just the illustrations to help you understand the different pieces of text. It's not a super hard uh, rule book to understand. It's a, it's a pretty simple, straightforward game to get uh, to grok. The only drawback is with DBG's rules, they tend to be a little bit all over the place. They're not as concise and uh, orderly as they, as they should be and could be. Hopefully this has been adjusted with Shadow War that we've not seen in other iterations. But this is just a, an example uh, so you can see of what's in the rule book itself. You don't have to, I'm not going to break down every aspect of the game for you. You can see for yourself here. And then we're going to get through the cards. And let's see if we can get to the Shadow War. Here's the Shadow War area. This starts on page 52. It explains the setup, equipment vehicles, new card types, and uh, mission cards that you're going to be using in the game. Extraction cards, a reaction force hostile cards, and then new counters that are in the game compared to the other versions of Warfighter. 
And like I said, going for the alarm and the alarm, the stealth aspect of this game is high. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep your sound down. You don't want to have, have the enemy going for the alarm. And then you have black ammo and subsonic ammo. Black ammo is subsonic. It's just a heavier hitting ammo than standard subsonic. Then you have hostiles, random hostile movement, and then hostile target encounters. And then we also get to the movement noise, which is what we were talking about before with the shadow skill, placing and revealing hostiles, attacking hostiles, attacking and unaware or pauses hostile, attacking and unaware hostile, and then your attack noise and evading hostiles. Noise track is explained here, and then going for the alarm track is explained there. Then we have night activity, uh, alarm sounded, and how to handle that, and then an extended example of play, and then we get into the campaign area of the rules. Explains how to read the campaign parts, your metal cards, and how those work, vehicles, the PMC game, and then we get business setup when you want to set up your own business when you're a PMC. Adds a little bit of a fun aspect to that game. And then you have undead alternative World War II settings, Nazi zombies. Who's not going to love that? Then we have player campaign, selecting your soldiers, first mission, following missions, and how to handle all of the campaign itself when you run, run your own campaigns. Then we have the Warfighter card keywords. This gives you an explanation of all the different keywords you're going to find on the cards and how to interpret them so there's no ambiguity because uh, sometimes people are maybe a little confused as to how things work. I know some of them can be a little confusing, but that explains to you how to use those. And then we have the Shadow War Daylight Combat PMC Scenario Book number two. And inside we have different missions. The mission briefing, no surrender, danger close, behind enemy lines, teamwork. So you get all these different missions that you can use in your game. You don't have to worry about creating anything on your own. These are all set for you with a little bit of a background story, the nation, special setup rules, mission rules, and then the developer's notes. And then we get to the old war horses where you've got a couple of old guys that have served together in World War II in Korea, saddle up for one last ride for glory and a get pay for that retirement in Florida they've always dreamed about. So you, just like in the movies, you get a couple of older guys that are uh, vets. They need some money so they can retire. They go off and do one more mission and then they can enjoy retirement. And then you get to Monopoly, which is set for your PMC game alone. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Warfighter Shadow War, a game designed by Dan Verson and published by DVG. As you can see, a lot of stuff in the base game alone. There are just uh, the North Korea locations, but as you get expansions, you'll add more cards for each of these decks. Locations, objectives, equipment, soldiers, skills, extraction uh, types. Everything that you want to expand upon will be expanded with each of those different expansions. Uh, counters look great. The matted map board is nice, beautiful addition. You have a scenario book number two for Shadow War, Daylight Combat, and PMC, so you can cover all of your modern war needs. And then you have the 81 page rule book. If you've not played Warfighter before and you're interested in tactical games, but you may be intimidated by some of the hex and counter tactical games, give Warfighter a shot. It's a really fun game. Now, granted, 81 page rule book may be intimidating at first glance, but like I showed you, it's 81 pages due to the fact that it's all big, easy to read text with a lot of illustrations. So that increases the page count exponentially. So th that will make it easier to grok. The only drawback, as I mentioned, is the rule books tend to be a little, uh, not as tight as they should be. They, you have to kind of hunt down different uh, answers to rules. You'll know it, but you'll have to hunt it down. And without an index, uh, it makes it much more difficult to find. And that is something this uh, series definitely needs is a, an index so that way easier rules reference so you can just move along in your game but like i said the tactical card game does work very very well if you like tactical games but you don't want to get into something super high-end simulation this is the one you want this is a hollywood movie tv show action but there are tactical considerations and thought processes you have to have in place as you move throughout you can't just it's not a push your luck you know euro game it is more of a um kind of that low-end simulation, but great action game. And you can knock out a mission in 20, 30 minutes, maybe up to an hour, hour and a half, depending on how big a mission it is and how well you're doing. Like I said, I've gotten knocked out in 15, 20 minutes, and then other times I've gone for the full hour and a half. But definitely recommend Warfighter if uh, you are curious about tactical games but don't want to get into a higher-end simulation.
Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.